Hi and welcome to another video. This time let's look into isolates and specifically into a new function that is coming in DARS 219 called run that will be available in the isolate interface. Before we start, just have a quick look into this documentation. If you are not familiar with isolates, this video is not going to explain how they work and how to use them, although there will be a couple of examples. But if you are missing a little bit on the knowledge, then go to documentation fairly straight out on yourself and then come back to check the new run function. Currently, if we want to spawn a new isolate, then we have this spawn method over here. So let's say that we have some JSON file that we need to encode or decode from JSON to JSON, whatever. It's quite a big file and let's say this is a Flutter application. So if we do it on the mine isolate in Dart, then this would take a lot of time and it would junk our UI. So this is not something you want. Therefore, we want to spawn a new isolate. And so every time that we are spawning a new isolate, then we are spawning an isolate that will share code that is passed as a callback to it with the current isolate. Like we have over here with this method, we have to do a couple of things to create a new isolate. We pass a function to it, this entry point over here, and then this function has one argument, which is of a type T, which is a message. And this is also a second parameter that we are passing over here to the spawn method. However, using this spawn method is a little bit cumbersome because we have to take care of the communication between different isolates on our own. So in order to be able to pass information or send information from the spawning isolate to the spawn isolate or the other way, we have to create and we have to use special object called receive port and also a send port which is included with the receive port. On the Dart documentation we have this page about concurrency in Dart and one section of this is how isolate works. So have a look over here if you have no idea yet how the event loops work and so on over here. But the thing I'm interested in is a simple example how to use the isolate spawn. And here we go. So if we want to use this method isolate to spawn, then we have to create first this receive port over here. Then we have to pass a send port from this receive port in order to ensure that we can communicate with the new isolate. And we have to do it because isolates are isolated. That's where the name comes from. So they are not sharing memory or in this in past they weren't sharing the memory. It's changed in the art 215. But from a user point of view, they still don't share the memory. So we, if we want to ensure any communication, send the data from one isolate to another, then we have to create these ports and use this ports interface over here. If you would be interested what changed in Dart 215, then what was before, every single isolate had its own heap in the memory and it was using, but right now there are groups of isolates instead which can share the same heap. And this apparently speed up the use of isolates 100 times as the changelog of Dart is saying. But let's leave these topics on side because that would just make this video a lot too long probably. And let's have a look into the new way that we can spawn isolates in Dart 219 without having to specify the receive port and passing the send port. So I am here at the Dart Lang SDK repository on GitHub right now. And you can see the path where you can find the isolate implementation in the SDK at SDK, SDK, deep, isolate and isolate the Dart. And now let's run a search over here to the run method. Yep, here we go. There is already a documentation over here, but I'm not sure if you can see it on the website somehow. But we have the documentation over here and you can see how the new function will look like. So here's an example. We have this slow Fibonacci function. And over here we have this isolate.run function. And that dot run function gets only one parameter right now, which is a lambda function that will be executed on the new spawned isolate. So this is a very helpful new method if you have to do some simple computation. And at this point you may say, okay, wait, but I've seen this already somewhere. And yes, you are right. You would have already seen it. There is the compute function However, the compute function lives within the Flutter foundations. So if you have a Dart only project, then you don't have access to this compute function. It's only in Flutter. And if you have a look over this, it's a little bit of a simple API to the run function that it will be now available for the isolate because it takes two arguments. So we have this compute callback over here. And if we have a look over this, it still has a message over here of the type Q. And we also have to pass this message as the second parameter. So it gets a callback, which has one argument, which would be the message, and the message is what we are passing over here. 
And this is not what is happening with the new run function, if you have a look over here. So the new run function, it just runs this lambda function without having the argument passed to it. Although the compute function from Flutter framework may get deprecated in the future with this new run method, then the spawn method will stay. First of all, because the spawn method is used under the hood in the run method. And secondly, in case we want to, for example, transform a file and we want to push back some feedback, like how many percent of the file are already converted or whatever, to the mine isolate in Dart or any other isolate that spawns the new isolate, then we still need our receive port and send port in order to communicate this information as the process is going on. The same thing would apply if, for example, we have one isolate spawned by the mine isolate and we want to reuse this isolate later by pushing more information to it in time. Therefore, let's have a quick look into the implementation of this new run function. So first of all, you can see that it's since Dart 2.19. So when the Dart 2.19 will be stable, then we will have an access to it already. And then over here, first of all, we are defining this result, which is a completer. Secondly, we define this row receive port. So it's also a receive port over here. But on the row receive port, we can set this handler over here. And this handler gets a Lambda function, which will be executed when a function that is passed with the computation over here completes later on. And then we have this handler over here set on the receive port. And this is something that will handle for us a response. So when the isolate to spawn down here later is executing and it finished executing, whether it's successful execution or an error was thrown from this computation method passed as an argument over here, then this handler will take care of recognizing what happened and then we can also respond to it inside of this lambda function over here. Let's go back to this in a moment. First, let's scroll down over here and we have an isolate.spawn. So exactly what we would be doing right now, just they are doing this under hood for us. They are running the spawn method, static method on the isolate, and they are taking care for us with the result port and with the send port. So everything that we would be doing otherwise manually in our code is done over here. Then spawn method returns a feature. And if there was an error, then you can see that here we are running this dot then instead of async await, we are running dot then on this feature. And in case of an error over here, we are just closing the result port and also completing error. Then also in case this spawn method would throw, which is apparently also possible, then anything that gets thrown, here we have the type object. So that means that anything that extends object, which is almost everything in Dart, it will be cough over here. We will close the port. So we basically do a cleanup and then we refrow it to the final user. In the end of the method, we have this result, which was our computer and we are returning a feature from it. So then we can async await it later in our code somewhere. And now let's go quickly back to the handler. So when the handler gets a response, First of all, we are closing the port because we will not use it anymore. This is only one time isolate. Then in case for any reason the response would be null, we are completing with an error over here. And if it's not null, then you can see that they expect a list. So they are parsing the response or casting the response to a list of objects. And then they are checking if the length of the list is two, then they expect that the first element is an error and second element is a stack. And if the second element indeed is a stack, then you are completing over here with an error. That is the first element. And we also pass the stack. Otherwise, we are just defining a new remote error over here. And again, we're completing this completer with this error. However, if the length of this list wasn't two, but instead the length of this list is one, and you can see this is not another else if, so we can only have two options. So they are expecting that either it's two because there is an error with a stack trace potentially. And otherwise there would be only one element and that would mean that we have a success. So in this case, we are finally completing our result with the successful response over here. And you can see that the first element of the list is then casted to the type R, which is the type that is expected here from this feature. And that's it. That's how this whole function works. The only other thing to notice over here that the compute function is not taking any arguments, but it's also returning the future or R, which means that it can return either a future of a type R or the type R itself, which means that it can be an asynchronous function, but it does not have to be an asynchronous function. To summarize, it's just a new simple API 
that will help us with isolates when we don't need the communication between different isolates. We only want to compute something on a separate isolate. And before we finish, let's just check if these examples already work, which should be the case. So how about we just copy this slow Fibonacci example over here. Here I have a new Dart project that I've created for this purpose. And you can see that I'm using here Dart version 2.19.0.4.4.4.2 beta, which should already have this available. Just I didn't want to switch my Dart version, so I've just copied the SDK to my path. If you have a look over here, I've just copied the whole SDK for this example, just for this one use case. And we will try to run it from here. Over here I have this mine function, and this mine function will just run this slow Fibonacci example. And finally, when it's done computing, we are awaiting the result and we are printing the result over here. Now the analyzer is currently unhappy over here because the analyzer is working with the Dart 218 point something and um, this is not what we will be running with. So let's try to run this right now. And here we go. So the result of running the slow Fibonacci out of the number 40 is this number over here. Now let's verify that online and we have that number and that's wrong. <laughs> okay, so here is a small plot twist because the example over here in the official Dart SDK is actually incorrect because in, in order to calculate Fibonacci with the recursive um, function over here, then when n is smaller or equal 1, then we should return n over here and not 1. And because it's 1, then in the end we are getting an incorrect result over here, which is the Fibonacci number for the next one. So in this example over here, let's change it. So if n over here is smaller or equals to 1, then we are returning n. And now if we run it, here we go. We get this number starting with 1, 0, ending 5, 5. If we go over here, we can see that that's the F Fibonacci of 40, starting with 1, 0, ending with 5, 5 over here. Well, that was a small plot twist that got me off guard a little bit as well. <laughs> Anyways, so that's it. Um, the example doesn't matter. Looks like this run function on isolate is already fully functional. So we can expect it with the next start version to be released. And for today, I think you've learned something new that you will be able to use right away when the new version of Flutter will be coming probably. So if you like this content, please like my video, leave a comment and also subscribe to the channel. But for now, I coach you to death and I'll see you the next time. Bye bye.